Alright, hello boys and girls, moms and dads. Welcome to Heroes Modern School Academy. This is 5th grade Bible reading. We are going to be doing week number 23 part of the curriculum today. And today we get a chance to read through Luke chapter 21. So we are going to read through this uh, particular chapter of the Bible. And you are going to get a copy of your Bible and try to follow along to the best of your ability. And then right after that reading, we are going to turn to our workbook and try to study that chapter, ask questions about it, so we can remember what we would have read. Alright, so please go ahead and get a copy of your Bible and let us read from Luke chapter 21 together. Luke chapter 21 And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury, and he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, Truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all, for all these out of their abundance have put in offerings for God, but she out of her poverty put in all the livelihood that she had. Then, as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations, he said, these things which you see the days will come in which not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. So they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? And what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? And he said, Take heed that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and, the time has drawn near. Therefore do not go after them. But when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines, and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake but it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Therefore settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But not a hair of your head shall be lost. By your patience possess your souls. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, let those who are in the midst of her depart, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. For there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword, and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea, and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, 
Look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Then he spoke to them a parable, Look at the fig tree, and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see, and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. And in the daytime he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and stayed on the mountain called Olivet. Then early in the morning all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. Alright, hopefully you were able to follow along with us to read from Luke chapter 21. Alright, so turn to your workbook right now and turn to page number 55. You are going to see that Luke 21 may be divided into four major categories. There's going to be section 1 from verse 1 to verse 4. Section 2 is going to be from verse 5 to verse 6. Section 3 is going to be from verse 7 to verse 33. And section 4, potentially from verse 34 to verse 38. All right, so let's deep de delve deeper into it. What's section 1 talking about? So section 1 was talking about the widow's mites. And this is um, a story of how Jesus observed how people dropped their offerings in the offering bucket. So she goes, he goes to church and he's watching people. They're putting large amounts of money in the offering basket. But then here comes this two widow, this widow with only two mites. And that's how she had to leave her. So Jesus sees her, puts her last two mites into the offering basket and Jesus goes ahead and tells his disciples that this widow over here has given more than all the people who dropped large amounts of money into the offering basket. Why? Because she gave out of her poverty. This other guys, these other guys over there, they gave out of their abundance but this woman gave out of her poverty. All right, so that's section one. In section two, Jesus starts to talk about how the temple is going to be destroyed. Um, uh, Jesus predicts that the temple of Zerubbabel, or the temple of Herod, actually, was how that's going to be destroyed. That's going to be from verse five to verse six. Then from verse seven to verse 33, Jesus starts to tell them certain things that will happen in the end time. He answers questions and he goes deeper to answer questions of his disciples because the disciples were asking him well what are could they, what are there going to be uh, what are the the signs of the end essentially <laughs> so they asked him well, you said the temple is going to be destroyed when will this happen and when will the end actually happen so they asked him those two questions over there which in the account of the book of Matthew you are going to see that they broke those three questions those two questions down to three questions what are going to be the signs of the destruction of the temple? When will the end of the age be? And when will Jesus return? Those three questions were asked in Matthew 24. But when Luke was documenting it, he just captured two questions. But nonetheless, it gives us an idea of when the end time will be. So Jesus starts to answer their questions by saying that the age will end when the following signs occur. Uh, deception because many will f come falsely in the name of the Messiah. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars. There are going to be wars and rumors of wars. There are going to be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. And there's going to be persecution, persecutions, and there will be tribulations and false prophets. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached. Then the age 
will close. Then he goes ahead and answers the question about when the temple was going to be destroyed. He says, when you guys see the abomination that causes desolation, as prophesied in the book of Daniel, he warns people, quickly get out of Jerusalem because that's when the temple was going to be destroyed. Then Jesus says that he will return when the sun is darkened. The moon does not give its light. The stars start to fall from the skies and the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Talks about some really key indicators what we can watch out for, especially to know that the Messiah is on the way in his second return. All right, so section four now is from verse 34 to verse 38. Um, Jesus encourages people not to be anxious, but rather to watch. What are you gonna be watching for? Don't get worried. But watch and pray. All right. Um, so we're going to go right ahead and try to answer a few questions right now. Question number one. Why did Jesus say that the widow gave more than others? Well, that's a pretty simple answer. She gave out of her poverty everything she had leave on. But those guys, they give out of their abundance just a little token of what they have. So they didn't give relatively more than the widow. The widow actually give more than them because giving is actually relative. It's actually based on what you have and not what you do not have. All right, question number four, number two. List at least four events that are characteristic of the end time. Well, you have them over here. There's going to be deception. There are going to be wars and rumors of wars. There will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes persecutions and tribulations you can list all of those here to answer the question all right so that's what i've got for you boys and girls i want to thank you for joining me today remember god cares about you and so do we bye bye i'll be your hero's buddy and as you study with hero's boy i will be your friend